let us say I'm giving you some kind of a data set. It could be in form of an array. And this data set has some integers in it. They could be unique, they could be repeated, that could be in any order, correct? So it is not necessary that every time I'm gonna ask you, okay, tell me the most frequent integer out of them, right? I could also ask you, tell me the top five frequent elements in this array. Tell me the top 10 frequent elements in this array, right? These are also some of the sample use cases. So that is exactly what we have to do in the problem, top k frequent elements on lead code. Let us see what is this problem all about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see how you can approach this problem straight away and what problems you may face. Going forward, we will try to optimize the solution and then also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us first make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. So in this problem, you are given an integer array and you have to return me the k most frequent elements. What does that mean? So let us look at our test case number one. I am given this integer array. Now this array could be in any order. It may be sorted, it may be not. And it may have elements that are repeated. They may be unique or they may be adjacent to each other. Anything is possible, right? And then you are given a value of k. So you have to tell me which are the two most frequent elements in this array. So you can see that one occurs three times, two occurs two times, and then three occurs only one time. You have to tell me the two most frequent elements, correct? So in this particular test case, the most frequent element is one, and then the second most frequent element is two, right? So for test case number one, this array will be your answer. You can return these elements in any order according to the problem statement, right? Similarly, let us look at our second test case. In this test case, once again, I have an integer array and the value of k is one. When the value of k is one, it simply means that return me the most frequent element. So you can see that one occurs two times and two occurs only one time, right? So the most frequent element in this case will be one, right? And for this particular test case, this will be your answer. But there is a specific catch in this question. Let us say in my original sample array, I had one more element two, right? And now I ask you, okay, tell me the most frequent element. Now you can see that both one and two are occurring two times, correct? So in that case, your answer would be both one comma two because both of the elements are the most frequent elements. Both have the same frequency, right? So then this will be your answer. Now, if you feel you have understood the problem statement even more better, feel free to try it out again once on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. When you begin to solve this problem, let us say I have the sample test case with me and the value of k is two. What is the first intuition that comes to your mind? Somehow you need to maintain that, okay, how many times a particular element is occurring, right? That tells you that, okay, maybe some kind of a table can help me, correct? So what I'm gonna do is, I will create a table that will store each number and its frequency. What you can do about this, you can start to traverse the array and then keep on updating your map. So once this map updates, I will get the number two and its frequency is two. I will get the number three and its frequency is one. I will get the number one and its frequency is three, correct? Now, when you have this map along with you, what can you do? You have to tell me the two most frequent elements, right? So you can start to iterate through each of these frequencies and tell me the elements, correct? So what you can do is you can iterate over this array and find the maximum frequency. Three is the maximum frequency, right? So you can write down one in your answer, but since the value of K is two, you have to tell me the second most frequent element as well, right? So once again, you will scan this array and find an element that is smaller than three. You will find a two this time, right? And then you will write whatever you found in the number. 
you found a two, so you write down two and you found two most frequent elements and this is your answer, right? But things start getting a little tricky when you have some tricky test cases. To demonstrate this, I am taking one more test case. Let us look at this array this time, right? And once again, I ask you, okay, tell me the two most frequent elements. You try to approach the problem in the same way. You create a map and then you will keep on iterating through the array to populate this map. You will get the number one and its frequency is three. You will get the number two and its frequency is two. You will get the number three and its frequency is two. You will get the number four and its frequency is one. Now you have to tell me, okay, tell me the two most frequent elements. You start to scan your frequencies. You see that three is maximum. You get this number and okay, I will write down one. Now, when you try to scan these frequencies again, you see that two is occurring two times, right? So in one scan, you found a two and you will write this number. Correct? What will happen is you will have to scan this frequencies again to see if you're finding any other two as well, right? So in the next scan, you find a three and then you will write down three. Then you will try to scan again to find any other two. You cannot find it. So for this particular test case, when the value of K is two, my answer will be one comma two comma three. So a straightforward approach will require you to iterate over this frequency again and again. And then only you can determine, okay, these are the K most frequent elements. Certainly you need to optimize the solution somehow. What can we do about it? Let us take up our sample array once again that we took in the last example. The value of K is two again, and this is my number frequency map. Once this map is populated, I will get number one frequency is four, number two frequency is two, number three frequency is two, and then number four, the frequency is one. Correct? So you want to find an optimal solution, correct? Whenever you're trying to optimize your solution, always try to optimize the step that is taking the maximum amount of your time. When you created this map, you only took order of n time to traverse through your array, correct? So you cannot improve upon that step. You have to traverse your array to check every element, right? So do not think about it anymore. That is the best you can do. Where are you facing a problem? You are facing a problem when you have to iterate over these frequencies again and again to find the two most frequent elements, correct? So what we can do about it? One way to think at this problem is, okay, what if I collect all the elements that have the frequency four? What if I collect all the elements that have the frequency two? And what if I collect all the elements that have the frequency one? So in a way, I am trying to group all my elements based on their frequencies, correct? So this is where a bucket sort algorithm can come in handy. Try to think what we are doing. We are creating groups, right? or simple buckets that will contain all of my elements. So what I can do is I can create these kind of buckets and we will use the bucket sort algorithm. So what this array is telling me that, okay, this is a bucket that will store all the elements that have a frequency of five. This is a bucket that will store all the elements that have a frequency of four. Similarly, I have all of these buckets, right? Now, what you can do is you can traverse over this frequency array just once and put all of these numbers in the respective buckets. So how do we go about doing that? So I start iterating over my frequencies. What is the first frequency? That is four, right? Check its corresponding element. That is one. So what I'm going to do is I will put this number in my bucket number four. When I put this element, my bucket looks like this. So what this bucket is telling me that all the elements in this bucket will have a frequency of four, right? Similarly, keep on traversing your frequency array. The next element you get is two and check the corresponding element. Put this element in bucket number two, right? Once I put this, my bucket looks like this. Move on now. What is the next frequency? That is two again. And what is the corresponding element? That is three. So put this three also again, bucket number two, because two is the frequency, right? So my bucket looks like this now. 
go ahead check the next frequency that is 1 what is the corresponding number that is 4 so put this element 4 in bucket number 1 now if you look at all of our buckets this is exactly telling you that all elements in this bucket have a frequency of 4 all the elements in this bucket have a frequency of 2 and all the elements in this bucket have a frequency of 1 now you need to tell me the k most frequent elements right so for one last time what i can do is start traversing these buckets from the end because we have the maximum frequencies at the end right so you found one bucket and what is the element that is one correct so in my answer i will write down one now start moving further back you see three but you don't have any elements right three is empty so you move one step back again now you have all the elements that have a frequency of two check this bucket you have three and two right so just write down three and two over here what i have now just did is i have covered one bucket four and one bucket two and these are the only two buckets that i had to cover because the value of k was two and hence these are the two most frequent elements in the array now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how all of it is actually working in action on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right i have my sample array and the value of k that is passed in as an input parameter to the function oh and by the way this complete code and the test cases are also available in my github profile you can find the link in the description below moving on with a dry run what is the first thing that we do first of all we create our buckets and then we also create a frequency map so these buckets will group all the elements by their frequencies and this frequency map will store the frequency of each integer correct moving on i need to populate my frequency map so what i do is i simply iterate over each element in my array and then i will put them in my frequency map right once i complete this my frequency map will be updated now moving on what i need to do is i need to populate all my buckets right and for that i will iterate over this frequency map i will look at all the keys that are these values right and using these values i will group all of my elements in this bucket so when i see a frequency of 4 i will add this one to my bucket number 4 when i see element 2 i will add this element to my bucket number 2 i see a 2 again i will add 3 to my bucket right and i'm adding all of these as array lists so in each bucket i will have a list of all of these numbers once you have made all of these buckets the last step is very easy just create a revert variable that will store all of your k most frequent elements and then start a for loop again that will iterate through all of these buckets from the reverse direction so i start this loop from the end and go all the way to the beginning what i'm just gonna do is i will look at these buckets and keep on adding these elements with the value of k so when the value of k is 1 i will add 1 when the value of k is 2 i will add 2 and 3 ultimately i will get my answer 1 comma 2 comma 3 in the result array and this will be returned in the output the time complexity of this solution is order of n that is because we are iterating through the main array only once and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n that is because we need this space to store our buckets and the frequency map i hope i was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you as per my final thoughts I just want to say that always take a moment to understand the problem statement correctly and accurately. Only then start to solve it. For a moment, it feels that this problem is very similar to finding the top three students in a class, right? So let us say in a class of students, there is one student who scored 100 marks, two students scored 99, and then the fourth student scored 98. All the other students have scored less marks. I ask you, tell me the top three students then who will you give me you will tell me the student with 100 marks and then two students with 99 marks these are the top three students right but this problem is asking you the top three most frequent marks 
So then you will have to give me the answer as 100, 99 and 98. Correct? So it is very important that you understand the problem statement correctly. What other problems did you see that play around words like this? How did you solve them? Can you solve this problem using any other data structure except using the bucket fort? Tell me everything in the comments section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. Also let me know what other kind of problems do you want me to solve. I will be glad to help you out. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Until then, see ya!